With this short video, I'd like to provide an update on my previous video about CRISPR therapeutics making headway to first commercial product and to answer a question received by one of my viewers, Anthony. In case you haven't seen my previous video on CRISPR therapeutics, I'll leave a link here as well as in the description below. Now let's get into answering Anthony's question. The question is related to CRISPR Therapeutics potential first commercial product CTX001 and the commercialization date that I had suggested in my previous video. With this video I'd like to share my thinking and rationale for the assumption of the first commercialization date. But first Although I have a PhD in biomedical engineering and over 15 years of working experience in the healthcare industry, I do not intend to give you investment advice. Please do your own research before making any investments. You are watching Health Wealth. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not, nice to have you back. So, in my previous video, I had suggested that potentially the first commercialization of CTX001 for the treatment of beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease could potentially be as early as May 2022. I cannot overemphasize that this is really just my personal opinion and a personal guess. I have no concrete information from either company, Vertex Pharmaceuticals nor CRISPR Therapeutics to back up my claim. However, here is my thinking. If we look at clinicaltrials.gov, we see that there are two clinical studies, currently phase 1-2, for the indication of beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease for CRISPR Therapeutics compound CTX001. These studies started in either September or November 2018, and the final results and study conclusion is expected, in fact, in May 2022. We then had looked at the April 26, 2021 press release from CRISPR Therapeutics, indicating that the European Medicines Agency had awarded the Priority Medicine or PRIME designation to CTX001 for the indication of beta thalassemia. And I have also highlighted here the fact that the same prime designation was awarded to the CTX001 compound for the treatment of sickle cell disease already in 2020. So now for comparative purposes, let's take a look at a product from a company we have seen on this channel previously, Bluebird Bio, and their commercialized product, Zinteglo. Bluebird's Bio Phase 3 clinical study started in 2016 also for the indication of beta thalassemia. And the phase 3 study is still ongoing to be concluded as anticipated in February 2022. We can then see that the compound, which later will be called Zintanglo as a commercial product, also previously had received the prime designation. I leave a link, as always, in the description below to this Excel spreadsheet from EMA. We then find on Wikipedia as of course on the EMA website as well, that Zintanglo was commercially approved in the European Union in 2019. So, while commercially available already in Europe, in the US under the FDA regulation, Zintanglo is still not yet approved. And this, however, is not that unusual. Due to the differences in the regulations in Europe versus the US, Oftentimes, new and innovative medicines may be commercialized sooner in Europe than under the FDA regulations in the US. And Zinteglo is just one of those examples. By the way, I leave a link here as well as in the description below to my previous video on Bluebird Bio and this compound. So, if we summarize, Bluebird Bio's Zinteglo had received the prime designation in the European Union as well as the orphan drug status. Likewise, CRISPR therapeutics compound CTX001 also received the orphan drug status as well as the prime or priority medicines designation in the EU. We have also seen that Zintanglo is commercially authorized in the EU while in fact the phase 3 clinical study is still ongoing 
and to be completed only in 2022. So I kind of revised my thinking that the CTX001 compound from CRISPR Therapeutics may perhaps not be commercialized immediately in May next year. This is when the phase two part of the clinical study concludes. However, I do believe that there's a very high chance that once the phase three study will be started, in parallel, potentially commercialization could happen in the European Union. I fully expect that in the US, of course, those commercialization timelines will be much longer. There's no doubt about it. Before wrapping up this video, I'd like to point out the one caveat, and that is the orphan drug status. It will be interesting to see how this might play out between Bluebird Bio, CRISPR Therapeutics, as well as other companies who all have medicines that target beta thalassemia and or sickle cell disease. I will do a future video explaining orphan drug status and the kinds of protections that companies enjoy when they receive orphan drug status for their products. But in short, it is market exclusivity so it will be interesting to see if CRISPR Therapeutics manage to get their CTX001 into the European market under orphan drug status, while Synteglo, also for beta thalassemia, is already on the market and also enjoys orphan drug status. I am not a lawyer, so I really don't know what to expect here. Certainly, though, this will be an area of very high interest, not only for me personally, but I'm sure for the industry. Perhaps a likely commercialization date could be after January 24th, 2023, because this would constitute 10 years after the orphan drug designation was given, and that is the period for which exclusivity is granted. So this summarizes my thinking. I hope you found it insightful and hopefully useful as well. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much.